today's vlog, I hang out with these guys. You're welcome. Hey guys, welcome to Saturday's vlog. This is the Q&A portion. So I have Justin and Brian, uh, middle of a Friday. This is a little weird. It's really weird. We had like Soup's weird. 45 minutes. So, and this happened last week too. Yeah. Which thankfully it did happen because Tuesday didn't happen when we normally film it. So thank you guys for taking the Thad point. It takes two people to replace Thad. There goes his head. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You both agree with that. All right. So we're going to answer your questions. Uh, we're going to go through. We're going to quickly answer them. Um, so let's just get into the questions now. Here we go. First question is from somebody that I can't name. Uh, and this question it's is, Bob. I'm not sure the best way to ask an anonymous question. But here you go. You found it. This actually came through our salon messenger on our salon website. Not freesaloneducation.com. They went like real. They went oh, wow. all into That's it. That's like hardcore. Uh, so... <laughs> If you guys want to submit questions, just go on Instagram and send them just over. Just do it however you, you want. You can private message them through that. Salon one, I don't know how we found this, but we found it. So good job. Um, all right. My employer, because their employer sees their Facebook and Instagram, they don't want us to sh share their name. My question is, uh, how do you handle lack of prof professionalism by the salon owner? I really like her, and I see, I see lots of potential in the salon, but she is new to owning and has said she never wanted to be a boss. I need to arrive 30 minutes early to clean every shift, to clean the horrible mess that she leaves behind. It's gotten to the point that clients have complained. I don't want to offend her, but I want her business to succeed and to continue working there, preferably mm. with her. So, all right, so she likes her boss. Her boss, I, I'm, I'm a little confused by the question because I feel like um, the things that you would think somebody would be upset about yeah, I'm not though because I've been there. Right. I had that boss. But so so, what would you say? Like, um, they're talking about when they when they're talking about sh she she cleans up her mess from the day before. Yeah, unfortunately, that that kind of sucks. I think <coughs> if you want to go about having it brought to the boss's attention without necessarily painting a target on yourself or making things uncomfortable for yourself. If you've got the kind of relationship with a couple of like the, a couple of guests that can maybe do that for you, because want to be a boss or not, they are gonna listen to what the clients are saying because those are the ones keeping the lights on. So right. maybe if like there's a couple clients that you're more comfortable with, maybe having them sort of say something for you because if they're already complaining, you know, rather than just complaining to the hairdresser, maybe if they're you know, write yeah. something in or call up and say something and have it be just a little bit more formal and come from the people that are, you know, paying to be there. Maybe she would take it a little more seriously. seriously yeah. yeah. I think that's actually, yeah. that's good. That's why I'm cool. the boss. Phone. All right. So there was another thing posted that, uh, so I hope that answers your question. Um, I, I think it was pretty solid. I, I would say it's definitely more powerful. Like for me, um, being a salon owner coming from, a a client obviously if it i would only do that if she's not listening to you uh personally but um but i also understand being afraid of yeah tarnishing that relationship right right and if it comes from your client i think that's really easy and it's not like uh it's going to hurt anything um and you would want to do that and, I, and as an owner i would want to know that before the reviews on yelp start happening and things like that so right. uh all right so michael hair posted on uh, hair hair i think it's just saying hair not oh like not like Brian we're hair. related no you're not related no. um Could posted be. a question uh which i thought was very interesting this wasn't to us uh it was on uh social media so the question was what is the difference between like the the generic developers in the store and the you know top brands like you know Wella, Paul Mitchell, whatever um, developers that you're currently using? Because and this is what I thought was interesting, bless you. Uh, this is what I thought was interesting is that uh, because they're now not working in a salon, they're working for themselves. They want to keep costs low, and which is. What is amazing to me about this industry, because I think a lot of people, um, when you're out there working for other people, and it's, I've been in salons where they do not 
uh, splurge on any developers. They don't. They'll they'll take the top name developers and they'll pour uh, generic developer in it, which makes no sense to me because most people don't see it. But um, the differences, I there are some differences in different developers. I can't mm. say exactly what the difference is between each one uh, because I don't have them in front of me. But I think chemically they're probably all the same. It's still going to be the same amount of peroxide to whatever. Right. The most difference that I ever notice is like consistency. Right. Yeah. The only time that I ever had somebody say anything to me about make sure you use this developer was it was a, the balayage developer. They said it was specially formulated to keep yeah. the bleach itself from swelling. Um, I mean, I know some companies like, you know, Goldwell will package it in a way where you have to use theirs because it's the only way to get. You know, that lift like it, yeah. right. not, not even the lift. Like, have you ever mixed gold oil color and like you have to push the bowl down onto the thing of color and it comes up from the bottom and it's just this big mess? Right. No, I heard nightmares. So I never, never tried. So, but that's so that's the funny part about this whole post was that now that you're working for yourself, you're keeping costs low, so you're trying to shift to something cheaper. A lot of people don't realize how expensive. And it was funny because while we were in Chicago. Drea went and picked up the order mm -hmm. and she's like, she was in such panic when yeah. she came in. <laughs> she wanted to keep it low and we gave her a blank check to pick up the order and she went to pick it up and she lost her mind over the little bit that she picked up and how much it costs. People don't realize how much those supplies That's a fast. really cost. Yeah. yeah. So when you move out on your own, you realize it. And I just thought the post was kind of funny. So, um, all right. This was a, a cool question on YouTube for us. Jessla asked, uh, any tips for newer hairstylists? Now, the, the thing that I liked, it is really raining. No, it is monsooning, lightning yeah. and everything. I love um, it. That's fun. Yes. You see? And it's going to be a great drive. Thunder. Home. So um, tips for new stylists. I personally think that as a new stylist, you should right away, um, and I know that this is kind of going against what a lot of people are complaining about on the internet right now, but I think you should start learning how to post your work. It's not going to hurt you at all, but it's going to help you a lot in the long run because the industry is moving to a point where uh, if you want to, depending on where you want to go in the industry, but even if you want to just become the best in your town, you need to be able to post the best work on the internet. Uh, showcase because no longer are people coming in to look at your portfolio and all of that different stuff. So if you don't know how to take pictures and you don't know how to make your work look great on the internet, you're going to lose in the long run. So that would be my, even if you don't think it's good enough yet, who cares what other people think of your work at this point? Just keep posting it. You'll start getting love from people and you'll get better at it as you keep posting. I actually have two really good quick things that helped me a lot when I was first starting. Two pieces of advice. First one, uh, do everything in your power to do the girls at the front desk's hair because then everyone that comes in the salon sees them. And if you're the one in charge of it, then they'll be like, oh, well, I like your hair, like if they're a new guest. That's a good idea. That was helpful for me. Uh, and the other one that was really huge, because you're new, you don't know the industry that well yet. You don't know the ins and outs and things to, ways to make things better and whatever. Um, someone said to me, everyone that is in your chair has left somebody else's, it's your job to figure out why. And granted, that is something good to take throughout your entire career, but especially at the beginning, because I was finding my way and learning things. And when I would have someone new, okay, well, this person left because they got to the point where they felt like they were treated like a number. All right, so I made sure I catered their experience to making them feel super spotlighted and special. Yeah. You know, this one, oh, they always cut too much off when I asked for a haircut. So I made sure that I... That was the number one thing I didn't do. And just those little things will help you pick up what not to do in this industry a little bit faster. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mine would be just don't put yourself in one category. You know, you're fresh out of school. You're brand new. You don't know what you're going to really fall in love with until you right. really experiment with color and cutting and styling and men's cuts and kids cuts. And, you know, like when I first started doing hair, I never, like now I don't want to do barbering stuff. I just want to do women's hair. As ironic as that is seven years ago, I didn't care anything about barbering you know but yeah. i kept like the door open and right and now that's what you i didn't want to cut when i first started and now i'm like a master cutter <laughs> <laughs> you're getting good at cutting you're like getting good no but like you okay come on like two years ago when it was you never started, bad you were never bad you were salon good but now, now you are focusing on it paying more, more attention to right it. and that's what i'm saying so all right i want to push through these next three questions um I was wondering when uh, 
posting work on social media, is it better to have set up a shoot in a professional at a professional level or just shoot it on your phone? P.S. Love the content. This is from Spencer.Nick on Instagram. This is so, a new question. Solid. But I think that I think we've all realized at this point, like people need to realize that social media, and this is where a lot of the older hairdressers are starting to flip out right now, um, and which I love watching. Because all of these people that are very, very like you know known in the industry are seeing these younger people that are consistently posting, not waiting for a fancy photo shoot, and putting their work out four or five times a day, and they're growing and becoming more popular right. than the other people that are sitting there yeah. waiting for a fancy photo shoot. You can do all of it. You should do all of it. You should post um, fancy photo shoots. But if you want to get known in the industry now, posting your work uh, as much as possible. I said to Brian, he just finished his balayage video. What was that? Almost two weeks ago now, right? It's been up for a week. So to a week yesterday. already. Um, it gets its hype. It gets its big push on views. It's going to keep growing, but people have already moved on to the next video. Like the people that initially follow you see it and then they move on to the next video. They find the next balayage video. So is Brian going to make the next balayage video or are is somebody else going to do it? Like that's where people in the industry now are being forgotten because they're not keeping in people's face. Who has the attention in the industry? That's what it's all about. That's why I'm posting videos every day because you can't forget about what I'm doing because I won't let you, right? So if you want to be known in the industry, then just become known and and make content. It doesn't have to be the best content. Well, no, the content has to be the best but it doesn't have to be professional photos. It doesn't have to be professional video. Uh, quick things are all it takes. You can totally do it on your phone. Yeah. You can definitely do it on your phone. Just a quick app or two, and you can make the photos look fantastic. I feel bad. My dad's calling me, um, and your mom called you too. That's yeah. weird. Is there something wrong? <laughs> I hope Did not. Did something happen? <laughs> I hope not. Um, all right, so hello, S-E, uh, S-E, F-S-E, fam. Um, Hi. Two part question. How do you build, how'd you build your FSE brand and where did you start? Did you work alone, build your social media following or did networking slash collaborating with other companies or stylists? All of it. Like we, so we started it with one video camera that was very cheap. Um, we even shot a lot of it on our iPad at the beginning. This was, you didn't see yeah, that part. So none of it. It's before um, even me. Yeah. So we had an iPad and the first investment I made was an iPad and then a tripod stand mount for the iPad because we wanted to capture a microphone in the iPad because we were having trouble getting sound. So a couple of the very first videos that you see on our channel were shot on an iPad. They're not great, but they got a lot of views and that's what kind of pushed it forward. Then I started reaching out to companies um, and really for those companies just to help share the message. That's where like when you're tagging people on Instagram and you're pushing things along, like tag companies that make sense. Like don't just tag things for no reason. Look, really look deep into what you're trying to do to deliver that message because there's certain companies that are gonna help you. If you don't see that company helping you, stop tagging them and everything because all you're doing is helping that company that's not pushing you along. So m that's always been my thought. I work with people that wanna work with me and help grow what I'm doing and that's very far and, and how few was that and far saying? between. Yeah, few and far between. Like you are not everybody's going to want to work with you, uh, especially if you are showing that you could become more powerful than them I with your message. So that's what well, that was part one, right? <laughs> part two. Oh, yeah. Did you work alone and build? We did. All the above. Yeah. All of the above. And then what is the best way to improve your haircutting skills on a mannequin head or models? Dun, dun, dun. The reason I wanted to say this is because I've been cutting mannequin heads that you guys have seen every single day for what? Ever. Pivot Point has hooked me up. I, I just got yeah, an it's email. Been probably, I want to say like a couple two, months. Two now. months, two, right? Two months solid of months solid mannequin. of mannequin every day. Now, when I go to cut a human's hair, it is so much easier now mm -hmm. because of the fact that mannequins are not easy to make look good. So you really have to work and, and focus. And now that I'm like, when, when I on Fridays when I cut humans, which is my day of humans, um, I'm like blown away at how good their hair lays and like it's a whole different thought process. You need to do both. 
Um, you practice on both because obviously mannequins don't have the weird kind of swirls and different things. But if you can control a mannequin, you can control anything. You guys are, agree with that? Yeah, totally. That's I what do. I do mannequin or uh, like men's cutting classes in like a cosmetology school when I would teach just that. Right. And they'd be like, oh, I don't want to cut a mannequin. I can only do, I can't do a skin fade. If you can get the hair on a mannequin to be completely, perfectly like tapered. You if can, you can get bangs can, to lay down on a mannequin. Right. Yeah, you can yeah. handle any human that walks in that door. Okay, uh, last question. Um, Which one is it going to be? I know. There's only one more. Yeah, well, that was well, easy. Well, there's two more thoughts, but the last one I'll just talk about. But the question is from Jackie Paul, hey. uh, 21, on Instagram. says, what is the best way for a cosmetology student to get involved in the industry? Which part of the industry? And that's the thing. Like, you... It, you can get involved however you want. It's just depend. Like if you, if you want to do hair, like while you're in cosmetology school to be involved in the industry, I think is really the, the main thought. And what I did is all I can say, which was I went to as many classes as I could outside of cosmetology school. I went to uh, a couple hair shows. Um, I drove eight hours to the grocery store. Someone, um, in in another state like you and that was because i was in iowa and there wasn't classes around me so like do what you can do and that's all i would say if you're doing more than just sitting in cosmetology school smoking cigarettes out back like (laughs) you're doing way better than than 90 percent of the people you know like you're doing better than you should be like you should be doing more than that is is what i'm saying i think off of what justin was saying earlier is a, a good way to approach that too because Something that I didn't even realize until I was graduating cosmetology school was how many different avenues you could take this job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe behind the chair isn't for everybody. That doesn't mean that hair isn't for you. You know, you could do session work. You could do freelance. You could do photo shoots. You could do... even jump even heavier and get into product development, tool development, you know, and just... You still need an understanding of all of this. So I think especially in cosmetology school... Like the people that sit around, I'll never forget the people that would sit around and complain that the school wasn't doing enough for them. And I would tell them like, it's not their job to like, this is being offered. If you just sit here and expect to, this is what you're going to do with your life, then you're not going to do anything. Like take every opportunity to learn everything, to see where you want to go with this. Well, and me and Christina were talking about this last night at like 2 a.m. Because I get like, I'm going through Facebook and I just get super fired up about certain posts that happen like it's so once somebody posts about um kind of like what you were saying like but they were saying instagram like so the more followers you have on instagram everybody's freaking out about instagram right now and and instagram uh celebrity hairdressers or whatever but um they post that success isn't based on the amount of followers you have success happens behind the chair but that's totally not necessarily true success happens behind the chair and success can happen from having a big following and people have a big depends on what kind of success you're looking for exactly there just like you were saying there's many avenues in the in this business you can go the route people are saying that you don't make money off of having a following on instagram that's a complete lie because and if you're not making money and you have a following on instagram you're doing it completely wrong because Nowadays, these companies are paying lots of money for you to post their products on your Instagram if you have a lot of followers. Yeah. The influence in the business is that's how people, they're not paying for ads and different things anymore. You're going to start seeing companies shying away from paying ads in anything because they have people that are being listened to. Like Instagram, YouTube, all of these different avenues you have a voice. You're watching this show right now. This is a voice where I can say to you, you know, I truly love this product. And people know whether you really truly love it or you don't. And that's that's an influence. So that's building success. Like I don't have a successful Instagram, but I don't get upset with people that have more followers on Instagram than me. I get impressed with what they've been able to accomplish. And That is success in there. They've been successful on that avenue. Maybe they're not successful behind the chair, but maybe that's not their thing, right? So you guys are successful behind the chair. 
you're working through Instagram. Usually when you're really successful behind the chair, it's harder to become successful on Instagram because you don't have the time. Because I have 11 seconds in between, in between my successes to take yeah. that picture. But you've made that choice, right? So you've made that right. choice to not take that 11 seconds and post on Instagram, just like the other people out there. I'm trying a little bit better. Exactly. But you're also not complaining about people that right. oh yeah, no. have it. So I mean, I use the hashtag, I still do hair, because a lot of people just don't see it that often on my social media. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, and that's the thing. Like, but that's your choice. Like, yeah. You like other things. People out there that are like doing just really professional photo work and photo shoots, that's cool. That's your thing. Not everybody has to be great at the same thing. And there's going to be famous Instagram people. There's going to be famous YouTube people. There's going to be people that still make DVDs and try to sell content. But I, I'm going to tell you right now, people want to see you constantly. And they want to see your work. And they want to get to know you. They don't even... I don't even know if people really care that much about the work until they get to know they get the work gets them there. And then what you give them after that is really what people are looking yeah. for. I believe, I think um, the reason they connect to FSE is because we're ridiculous. Yeah. And, and what <laughs> I chose to do yeah, today sure. on a Friday when I could quickly go home or we could quickly just hang out and do nothing. Oh, yeah. We set up a table and lights and cameras and, that I was about to go home. For, right. <laughs> and that 45 minutes between guests, we decided to make this video. Like that, that's what you have to do nowadays. And so, and if you're not doing that, you're going to be pissed because if someone you, else is going to. Because someone else is going to, and you shouldn't be pissed that someone Don't else is so doing pissed. it. Don't be so pissed. Get it together. Hey, now this was the last thing. Or you can't, can't really say. It. Whatever. Turn on notifications. Did you see this on Instagram everywhere? R really? So <laughs> Do I have Instagram? <laughs> then yes, I saw it. Exactly. So um, I actually, I almost jumped on it. I actually created a thing, posted it, and then took it off. Because I, I started thinking when I saw everybody flooding with it, like I took a step back and I was like, you can't tell people to do something. They're already following you. Yeah, like if they're following... Which, by the way, I have not noticed a difference in I my feed either. at all. No, and it it's It is still great. chronological. I, I was always excited about the Instagram change because I want to see what I want to see. And Facebook knows what I want to see for the most part. Yeah, Skynet like, knows everything about you. Exactly. So I, I would rather I'm not like getting like a regurgitated like feed just thrown with everybody's stuff i would rather you kind of see what i like to look at like i'm i'm looking at different images or videos i want you to know that i mean I, otherwise i wouldn't be on it yeah. you know like if i didn't well, want you to read my mind i wouldn't do it that's what i feel like the little the little search buttons for it mine is just nothing but like yeah. cars hair guns and cats <laughs> mine's all <laughs> models and hair i'm like all right well i have specific tastes <laughs> <laughs> right right so um the <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, the turn notifications on thing, I only want to talk about that because the, the whole point of this entire Q&A thing that we did here is... to is ask you to please turn on notifications. Yeah, just turn them on. <laughs> yeah. We will is, find you. Is not to, to worry about putting out good content. Don't worry about telling people what to do. People are going to do what they want to do. If you put out good content, they will follow you. Just be you. Be you. All right. Done. Done. Follow Justin. I, I am Justin Scott. And Brian Hare. Hair, oh, wrong arm. <laughs> Hairstyle. Hairstyle. <laughs> and thank you guys so much for watching this q and I hope you guys enjoy your day, and we'll be back with another vlog tomorrow. Um, okay, I'll be in that one, too. That's pretty much it. If you just keep... I didn't know where to look on this one. I was like, where's the camera? I know. They're, they're kind of everywhere. They it's, are everywhere. Well, they're not really Literally. everywhere. They're right there's there. There's one up there. There's one back <laughs> there. There's like seven on that table. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.